Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. God damn it. Welcome to what? Drinking Bros. What's, what's, you bros. start this out all pissed off. I'm not pissed Jared. off. Yeah, he is. Here, I'm just concerned that we didn't find a dirtier hat for him to wear. Yeah. Uh, what's wrong with my hat? No, it's well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just super Filthy. clean. Hey, it's, it's got personality. <laughs> yeah. those, are, those are hard years on that There's hat. a lot of smells, a lot of stains. A lot yeah. of taste. A lot of memories. I like to think it represents me personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> How long you had that hat? Uh, actually, not... About a year or two, actually. Okay, so, I, if yeah. you were going to say 48 hours, I was like, you yeah. disgusting. Is, fuck. That a, is that a combat hat? <laughs> it, it's been around for oh, sure. Oh, there you go. Definitely oh, for sure. There it is. <laughs> I like the, I like the sound of that. There it is. Oh, yeah, Anthony, why don't you tell Shit, us who we got on the show today? A long time ago. I'm actually... Are you on the free fall team? Yes. Oh, then fuck. Yeah, you don't have a count. What? Huh? I, I asked him how many jumps he has, you know? I mean, that's how we fucking measure dicks in this room. I see. Me? I've got 31. Most of them combat equipment. Oh. What? I just don't care about that anymore. Um, <laughs> so I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure how to say say your last name. Stay school. Stay school. So yeah. Richard Stay school. Yeah. He's the guy that we've been talking about recently. Who uh, the Department of Defense medical staff has done such a great job for over I the years. I wonder why. And some piece of shit named Lindsey Graham, who is a senator in South Carolina, is mm-hmm. the one single person blocking his pathway to a little bit of justice in this life. So. That's who he is. Yeah, no. we, we did a, a huge show on it. Um, mm-hmm. If if you want to rewind Drinking Bros listeners, go back to an episode called Fuck Lindsey Graham. Um, that was literally was the title of it. On that one. You were. It was yeah. definitely good, though. I appreciated all Thank of you. it. So. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you hear it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. So, look, we were we went hard. Yeah, uh, for his sure. mailbox filled up in, I think, an hour after, after the show was over, and I know... A bunch of people wrote in and said that his mailbox was magically full. <laughs> yeah, but now, that, but now so. we have now we have the horse's mouth here. So yeah. We well, do. his, his email more. address is not listed on his, congr- on his senatorial website anymore. I bet we can guess it. Uh, constituents. Lindsay.gram. Yeah. Although, <laughs> they do have the phone number, so just to lead off the show, we'll put this in the description, too. Good. 202-224-224. Five nine seven two, and you. I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there that listens to the show that might have a good email address for Lindsay. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, his personal send, email address. His, uh, in, and everything I've been told, he's very elusive. He changes it almost monthly. Is that right? Phone numbers, that emails, everything. Does not sound like a practice from an elected <laughs> official. <laughs> nope. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, and that's the first thing I'll lead off with. Yeah. The thing that pissed me off the most of that video clip of of uh, the reporter asking him if he would meet you. Even when he the reporter when he when he sends it to them for questions, he looks irritated. And mm-hmm. I just want to beat that smug fucking look <laughs> off his face because that's your fucking job is to listen to people's concerns. And you're up there like, OK, fine. Fuck. What do the peasants <laughs> want? Yeah. What do the peasants want? Go ahead and tell me. And also his corn. response was, yeah, I'll listen to him, but I'm not going to change. Yeah, my I'm mind. not going to change my mind. Like, Dude, what the fuck, fuck does you. that mean? Lindsey yeah. Graham, you, you're a Lindsay. piece of shit. Fuck you. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Well, right. the, fuck the, you. Two zero two. Yeah, exactly. Two two four, five nine seven two. Fucking smug piece of shit. And the, and great, the greatest uniform. thing about this show is we we do this story. Um, we went hard for an hour, and then boom, two weeks later, here you are. Mm-hmm. You're sitting with us in studio. So first of all, we want to say thank you for taking time. I out appreciate to, it. Thank um, you to to come up yep. and, and be on the show with us in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, secondly, is that true? That Lindsey Graham is 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 the guy that is blocking this. Yeah, well, since he's the uh, the chairman of the judiciary system, or mm-hmm. the you know within the Senate, he's the key. Um, and you know, we went around, we did get to uh, meet with senator, um, other senators like Tom Tillis, you know, and and basically it was the same response: is I'm going to defer to whatever Senator Graham says. Which it's funny because when I sit there and think about it, it's like, well, that sounds like medieval times when when the subjects of the of yeah. the king yeah. the kingdom, you know, yeah. had to. Yeah. Had to do whatever What's the king wanted. What's the point wanted. of the fucking system yeah. now? In order, Paul, in order, he says. in order to keep what you have, you got to do what the king wants. Right. And I thought that was kind of really, uh, kind of aggravated me quite a bit. It was like, you know, like Natalie likes to say a lot. It's like, did you say when uh, you put out your um, slogans, you know, I'll support you, but I got to go check with Lindsey Graham first. Yeah, no, before, yeah. Sure, right. we need to before like I do what Senator on Graham. Too. What's his name? Yeah. Before I Tom do uh, what? Tom, Tom Tillis, Tillis, Tillis North yeah. Carolina. Fuck you. By the way, uh, so. we don't like kings and queens in this country. We no. fought a fucking war over it a couple hundred years ago. You That's may have heard of it. That's the fucking worst answer I've ever heard in my life, and it goes against your whole fucking position, Tom. Yeah. yeah. You're a piece of shit. It's so dumb. You know, by the way, Lindsey Graham is uh, like a 35-year veteran of JAG Corps in the military, mm-hmm. right, in the Air Force. Yeah. So that whole uh, we don't leave people behind, that's not a rule. That's the rule. 
That is the only one that ever matters. Well, you know, it's funny too, is I actually read, a, read an article or saw a video, I can't remember which one, but it was, he actually stated, he's like, I'm not a hero. I'm not a big of a service member as the rest of these guys. And it's like, all right, well, if you're really not, then don't try to side with me and, and when, with the rest of us and say that you know what the right answer is. Exactly. You obviously right. don't. Like the, I mean, just the excuse he gave for not even. It was dumb. Being, Didn't like, make any sense. The intractable mm-hmm. position he's taken based on test pilots. We don't have yeah, fucking. It's yeah. not the 1940s. Like, what the we're fuck is he fucking, talking about, we're dude? We're not testing rockets Jesus and shit Christ. like that anymore. Yeah, yeah, you're, By the way, his office. Our pilots are getting in fifth generation fighters. His like, office is 290 Russell Senate Office Building in D.C. So if you just want to go hang out in front of there sometime. Yeah. It's hard. I used to hook down there. <laughs> and uh, it's hard to get in. I, I, this I mean, time of year, it's super cold and windy. Honestly, and yeah. I want to yeah. go on Tom. Like, Tom, that pisses me off. Like, that's the wrong answer. Then I'm going to defer to what fucking Lindsay we've, says. We've actually heard from some of our, some, some of our friends uh, that are in politics that uh, taking such a harsh position against these people or could backfire. And you know what? I don't give a fuck about that. That's that's just not Fuck how this people. game is played. Well, you, you know what I want to say too is that you know um, I don't know if you guys heard, but um, Senator Rick Scott from Florida, he yeah. actually just came out and openly said he's going to support. So first senator so far to openly support. Rick Scott, the former governor mm-hmm. of, uh, of Florida. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow, and, uh, really? That's so cool. we need to fucking Finally, thank him. He can, yep. Yeah. So uh, I, I very much appreciated what what he's done so far. He's yeah. the only one so far. But but you I mean, know just, it's like I can handle a no, I really can, but come out and say it. Yeah. What are you waiting for? It's like for Senator Tillis, like, what are you waiting for? Come out and tell me. If you don't support and that's it, your, and just that's come out your and say official it. Too. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. fucked up. For Fort Bragg and everything. So he's got one of the largest military populations underneath him. Well, you we've know? got the largest military audience. Fucking Tommy boy. Yeah. yeah. We'll see how just, you do Just to North reiterate, Carolina. I think we talked about this on the sh- a previous show, but what he's talking about as far as the Judiciary Committee uh, in the House, the Judiciary Committee uh, pretty much said military can take this. Right. Yeah. Like the the Armed Forces Committee can take this. They can vote it. They can add it to the National Defense Authorization Act. Right. And uh, Lindsey Graham solely has the power to do that. He can defer and let it go into the NDAA and it becomes law overnight, more or less, because they're they're waiting to sign it now. And uh, it's so it's one. It's like all these other people are culpable. Tommy Boy, whatever the fuck his stupid name is. And uh, Tom Tillis. Tillis. Yeah. All these all these dickholes that are too fucking cowardly to actually do something about this. Of course, they're culpable. There's one man standing in the way of this happening, and he can get fucked, right? Like, is, is there's just no way that you're representing your constituency. If you took a vote on this issue, like, your job is to represent the will of the fucking people. Yes. Take a vote on this and tell me how it turns out. Yeah, yeah and what I said on the last show was this, this reminds me of uh, when Jon Stewart spoke um, before Senate and, and asked for the funding for, for survivors for the mm-hmm. 9-11 to continue. Lindsey Graham was against that as well. Yeah. And uh, there's an f- infamous photo of, of Jon Stewart laughing uh, next to Lindsey Graham as right before the bill is about to be passed. <laughs> um, is this your hope, too? Do you need a celebrity to come out? Uh, obviously, we wanted to have you on the show to get your story out there, yeah. which we're going to get to in detail, great detail in a moment. Um, is that something that is necessary in today's world to fight Congress? Uh, you know, I'd like to say it's not, but I almost think it is. I mean, you guys have seen the last two years and all the – you know, everybody from Hollywood's got something to say about politics and all of a sudden they're mm-hmm. politicians themselves. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think I need one. You know, there's a, there's enough of you all out there. There's enough military folks out there that know the truth that want the answers. We just got to speak up. Yeah. And, um, you know, like <coughs> glad you said that when I first started this, so many people would email me, write me, text me. And they'd say, man, I support you, but I can't say anything. Cause I'm afraid of what will happen to me. I've had four stars, four stars have told me the same thing. They're like, man, I hope you win. I hope this happens. But, but they won't come out and publicly say it because they're all afraid of their next stepping stone in their careers. And, yeah. and I What's can promise you this has almost broke my entire life, my career and everything in the process. And it is what it is. Yeah, and to have people be like, oh, I'm with you, but, you know, I can't. What, can, What's the point of this? It, yeah. Unless you go through it, mm-hmm. right, yourself, everybody else is like, it's a, it's a pat on the back, it feels like. It. Yeah, yeah. Feels yeah. like that, hey, man. Though. I feel really bad about you, but I got to take care of my own shit here. Yeah. So good luck with that. What's the point yeah. of this brotherhood if we don't use it? What's the point? Like, let's just all fucking quit, man. Like, what's the point of having any of this shit if we're not going to fucking use it? I don't, I, I don't get I that. I had, uh, you know, a long time ago, I finally met with them, like VFW, American mm-hmm. Legion, those in uh, MOA. And in the beginning, I reached out to them, and they're like, you're not a veteran. We can't help you. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, 
I am a veteran technically. I mean, yeah. just because I'm still active service. duty, I mean, shit. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, well, I did, service, I did take a break in service and got out, so does that count? And, you know, now they're starting to come around, but it's like, yeah, what, I'm on the five-yard line right now, and now you want to jump on board? I appreciate it. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but where were you when I was, you know, back on the kickoff here? Yeah. So. Well, I think the ultimate goal is that you get over the goal line, and however you yeah. get there, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, no, not Doing at all. shows like this and hopefully others out there will listen to this and have, have you on the show – if you could describe your story and, and what you're going through to the audience that might not be familiar with it, um, just start from the beginning of uh, – you were, you were a Green Beret? Yes. Yep. Um, well, I, I mean, you're talking about from, like, when I got sick and everything? Yeah. Or, all, okay. All, yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you started in the Marine Corps, right? Yeah, so uh, – to and uh, yeah, I think it was, you know, February 2001, I joined the uh, the Marine Corps, just just wanted to do something. You know, I wasn't didn't have the greatest path in life and wanted to – you know, find my niche, I guess. So I joined the Marine Corps and then shortly after 9-11 happened, you know, and then got ready for all that. So you got in before 9-11? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Did so you I, see that and you were like, oh. Actually, I remember I was sitting in the, <coughs> I was sitting in the chow hall eating food, watching it on TV, watching the towers go down. It was uh, it was pretty surreal, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they pulled everybody around there and said, if you don't understand what's about to happen, you're, you're crazy and you're fooling yourself. I don't think the Marine so, Corps really has to worry about that too much. Nah, everybody nah, nah. comes there to rip heads off. There's yeah. no like <laughs> Every, everybody's yeah. rifle like, in. So. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> like you. Can I go pack now? Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty we much. We were hoping this would happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody yeah, was ready. That's for sure. There, just got three <laughs> plates of shit. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, the towers are going down. You can't cheer yet. You got to yeah, wait yeah, yeah, yeah. until tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not cheering for him going up cheering because we're going to war. It got super awkward in the chow hall. Yeah, he's like, wait, you guys? Is this Al Qaeda? You guys Al Qaeda? What's going on here? <laughs> no, nope, we're just assholes, and we want to fuck some people up. So some people, yeah, some, some people, people, some people did, did some things. things yeah. yeah, some yeah. people. Ellen Omar, Ellen Omar, get fucked. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. So did you get deployed after that? Yeah. Oh, actually, so we went on. Uh, actually, went on ship and uh, went over to the Pacific for a while and sat there. We were going to do some some operations in the uh, over in like. Uh, you know, Asia, Asian countries and all that stuff. But yeah, every uh, time we go to war with somebody else, we got to go. Yeah, you got to go elsewhere. But uh, <laughs> yeah. then eventually, uh, doesn't fuck around. My early friend. 2004, I ended up over in Iraq. And then um, it was shortly after that. And uh, right around the invasion of Fallujah, they all left Fallujah. They came over to Al Anbar province, yep. Ramadi. And uh, they came over, said hello. We said hello. And then um, I ended up taking a sniper round through my left shoulder, right around right my arm here. And it came out my back next to my spine. So it went. Bust my arm up, went through my, my lungs, barely missed my heart, spine, shattered my shoulder blade. Um, so, I mean, during that, you know, we just kept kept fighting and then eventually got out of there. And then um, about that time, we were having problems at home. My, my grandparents were all dying and mm-hmm. passing away. So my, my mom was like, could you just get out for a little bit, give me a break? And so I, I got out for about a year. And in about a year to the date, I was like, I'm, I'm good. I've had enough of this. You know, there didn't seem like much meaning to life. And it was just didn't have what I needed. So I went yep. back. Um, the story was that there was a Green Beret who put in a chest tube for me, which ultimately saved my life. Mm-hmm. And so it was just kind of a repay to service. So I went right back in, knew I wasn't going to do anything different. And then uh, that what was MOS? it. What MOS? I ended up at 18 Bravo. Uh, I took uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to do the Arabic and Delta. Yeah. That's and then what, I was like. That's what I was thinking you were going to. Well, no, nah, right. they were like, you know, that's like a three-year process. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I'm good. What's the shortest process? They're like, French and Bravo. I'll take it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sign me up. So You're like a 1-1 one, one in French. Yeah, barely. Do you know the guy who put the chest tube in? I don't. Actually, um, to when this I, day, you don't know. When I went through um, the selection, there, I actually ran into a guy and told the story to, or actually the guy was telling the story. And I went up and I was like, hey, did he say these things? And he was like, yeah, man. He's like, yeah, I know that guy. He teaches. He was teaching down in uh, Florida during uh, in a, one of the hospitals, and it was a story he would always tell. And I was like, holy shit, like, that's crazy. Um, he, always, he always tried to get us to link up, and I just, you know, life caught up and took off and didn't have a chance. But uh, if he's out there, I said, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, but then, you know, fast forward, got, got the 10th group over in uh, Fort Carson, Colorado, did some deployments, um, had a good time. And then uh, fast forward 2017, I was getting ready to become a warrant officer, so I was going to go to dive school. I uh, wanted to go to a dive team. Went in for a physical. Every time, you, you know, if you go to dive school, especially for me with a lung injury, mm. it's mandatory CT scans because they got to yep. make sure the lung can function. So I remember getting out of, uh, I think it was Mott Lake. I did a 3K swim, got out, and they're like, hey, man, if you don't go do this right now, you can't go. So I went up there, changed my clothes, went in for a routine po- appointment, just like everybody else would. They did a scan, said, hey, I'll, we'll let you know if there's anything uh, we see. So I left, never heard anything, finished my physical, went down to dive school about March. 
just struggled. I couldn't run, couldn't breathe. And it's like, you know, it's flat down there. There's no issues down there. And uh, I just, you know, ended up pass- falling out. I couldn't make it. And then uh, got fast forward a little bit later, about April, I started wheezing, coughing, couldn't breathe. I couldn't lay flat on my back. I had a pain in my chest. And um, so May 15th was the, I finally was, I finally tapped out. I raised my hand, told the guys, hey, I'm, I'm going to go. Something's not right. Went to our SWIT clinic, and one of the deltas was just talking to me for a little bit. And eventually, he's like, you know, you, you don't look all right. And I was like, nah, I think, I think I'm fine. I think I'm fine. He's like, nah. He's like, just do an EKG. He's like, just humor me. We'll do some tests. Then ultimately, he's like, you should probably go to the ER and get seen. So I was like, all right. So he called me an ambulance ride. He was like, hey, this is the fastest way there. Took an ambulance ride over. Got out of the ambulance. This is where everything starts getting funny. Got out of the ambulance. They wheeled me through with on the gurney and put me right in, right in the uh, waiting room. And they're like, have a seat. We'll get with you when we can. And I remember <laughs> thinking, I thought that was the whole point of the ambulance ride was to be seen because it's an emergency response vehicle, right? I'm yeah. Like, all right. <coughs> so was, I think it was literally about two hours later went by. Finally, the actually, the EMT came back twice after going back out, coming back twice and kept telling him, hey, this guy needs to be seen. And then I finally went back and the whole way back saw the nurse and she's like, oh, you're too young. There's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. Yeah, I think she actually told me I was faking it at the time. Got back to the ER doctor. Same kind of stuff. Like, I don't know what's wrong with you. Would you see or a... Um, I think he said do an x-ray. Was this at Womack? This is at uh, Womack on Fort Bragg. Jesus fucking Christ. He does a breathing treatment, gives me some other stuff, and he's like, you know, I think it's just walking pneumonia, but then he says, we did review your CT scan from January, and he's like, we're going to go ahead and schedule a follow-up with you. Just somebody will call you we'll, and stand by. I was like, okay. So really confused on the and system. what month is this now? Uh, this is May 15th, May. Uh, 2017. Okay. Um, and I remember telling him, I was like, I know how this goes. I'll see you a week from now. Mm. I literally said that to him. Let's me go, gives me some prednisone, sends me home. A week from then, May 22nd, I was at work again on the computer, literally passing out. I'm calling my wife. I'm begging. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm calling the pulmonologist. They're like, they tell me, if you're not over 31, 32 days, you can't be seen off post. If you're not a new patient or uh, if you're not existing, you're not priority. <laughs> so new patients have to wait. Um, I was calling everybody I could, begging for help because I couldn't breathe. I was passing out. I go to my command. They sent me out in town to go to a regular hospital to see if it was any better. The time I get there, I was passed out in the car. They literally picked me up, put me in a wheelchair, took me inside, and, I, and then I eventually was out completely. So you drove yourself to that? Actually, oh, well, a buddy from work drove oh, me. Okay. Drove me about an hour to the hospital. Then uh, they woke me up doing a sternum rub, and then... Uh, well, that's not fun. No, yeah, it's very painful, actually. Yeah, it sucks. And then, what uh, does that involve? Uh, I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm good. Just let him do it. <laughs> what is it? Come on, it's fine. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what that is. That yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. You take your knuckles it's and exciting. rub them yeah, on yeah, the sternum yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you. Yeah, it's it'll wake, that'll wake you up from the dead. Why? W- yeah. Because <laughs> I was out completely. Really? Yeah. So they they had to do it to wake me up and see what was going on. So and then uh, same thing. They eventually discharged me and sent me home. And then um, things just got worse. Out from there, it got to the point where eventually I started bleeding out of my throat. So I was just coughing up blood. I couldn't sleep on my back because it felt like I was being waterboarded, mm. literally. I was just drinking blood constantly. Um, and then it just persisted from there. And finally, my commander went down to Womack, had to pick a fight with the, with the officer there in pulmonology, and either said, you know, you're going to see this guy or let him go. So he goes, okay, well, we're really busy. We'll let him go. Takes him. <laughs> he releases the paperwork. They screw it up. Two weeks <coughs> later, it comes back to the start. So the two weeks have gone by. Then he fixes the paperwork. It goes back again. It goes a special referral. Special referral goes out in town. They call, finally call me. Well, now it's surpassed the original date that I had. But the cool part about it was I got out in town. They called me immediately. They're like, bring me all your scans. I got them as fast as I could. They called me the next day. Bring me more. What? There's something we need to see. I came in a couple of days. Literally within a couple of days of them calling me, I had an appointment I was in. By the end of the appointment with a pulmonologist he's like hey have, have you uh been coughing up blood and i was like actually i have he's like go downstairs right now he's like you're gonna do a scan and i'll call you called me about the next day i think and he's like hey I'm, if i could have you in tomorrow for uh, a biopsy we, i would but i can't so we're gonna do it i think it was uh, the monday so it was about three days from there it was around july 4th and then um then just from there I, w- I woke up and you know my wife was crying and he's telling me i have stage 3a uh, lung cancer so I know it's kind of a long and death boring story, but no, it's not, not it's, at all. Uh, it, it was actually six months of a nightmare to, to be honest, you know, all the way to the point where, you know, I'm going to dinner with my family and I'm just blood 
spin up blood in front of my parents. And they're busy at Womack. And they're busy at Womack. Yeah, and, and by the way, for the audience who's listening to the audio show, that is Jared and Dan who have AIDS who are coughing, not our guests. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have cancer and you don't know? Or? Probably. Just, listen, I'm, just, I'm not going to Womack, I'll tell you that. No, fuck that. Yeah, no, I've been to Womack. Actually, yeah, I, I know. Dro- I've, I've had to deal with that pulmonology. Yeah. Uh, I've, I drove myself to Womack with kidney stones one time, and, and, and <laughs> I'm like, I passed out in the fucking in the parking lot as well, and I geez. woke up like, oh, shit, i got to go inside. So I went inside. and <laughs> then not bad. They, yeah, give, yeah, me, yeah. they yeah. give me a shitload of drugs, and then like, you got to ride home. Like, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, i got to ride home. It's yeah. My car it's out there in the parking lot <laughs> drove myself home stupid yeah. anyways womack is the worst man yeah. i mean i can't imagine how bad it is now because they just added like thirty thousand yeah. uh trade doc or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. people there yeah it's getting so, worse so it's, it's even worse busier. than it was before yeah so with with stage three um is that terminal uh no not technically i mean i still had a fighting chance technically at mm-hmm. the time it just means that it's crossed over it's now touching two areas instead of one um so that's what, what does that's, that mean touching two areas uh so before if they would have caught it in January, it would have just been in my lung. But instead, they waited, and it went over my trachea, and that's how I ended up bleeding. I see. Um, so, you know, the lining to my trachea was just constantly – it was an open wound, basically. And then uh, the tube to my lung was just closed. It was collapsing. So. And then what's happened since that diagnosis? Um, well, I'll tell you another fun part real quick about uh, Womack. I went in, scheduled an appointment to see the colonel of the hospital. No sympathy whatsoever. Got told shit happens. Uh, You're kidding. He just came off suspension at the name? time. Well, you don't tell me his name. I'll look it up. Yeah, I can't remember at the time. Uh, I do have it. But uh, literally showed me no compassion, no care. Um, so I got angry, and that's how really what kicked this whole thing off. And I think in my testimony, I, I did tell him, I said, you know, had that colonel showed me a little bit of compassion towards this, I probably don't. I could honestly say I don't think I'd be doing any of this right now. But the fact that I was just treated like another number that nobody cared about really kind of upset me. From um, another guy in uniform. From another guy in uniform. Oh, we're going to find this one. So, But uh, since well, then, I did traditional chemo, which I had a great <laughs> response. And then I had surgery to remove the upper right part of my lung where the tumor was. Thought it was good. Then in January of 2018, it metastasized, which then I became terminally ill. Well, I was stage four at that time. Then I went on uh, like a chemo pill, which worked up until about three, four months ago. And then it stopped. Um, I had to do... Some radiation and stuff because I had a tumor on my spleen that wouldn't stop growing. The tumors in my neck that were still growing. Um, and that was the big concern now. Was I, I mean, it, originally it looked like like a, like your white claw was in my neck, like that can. That's how big it got. And then uh, so now I'm doing a clinical where every 11 days I literally I go down to um, Moffitt in Florida. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I mean, back and forth between D.C., Moffitt, um, chemo have you, constantly. Have you looked so. into France or Germany at all? Mm-mm. Going over there to get seen? No, not yet. I, it's I mean, not out of the question. That but is, that is where that is where the leading. Yeah, where you're not getting put on bullshit because it's it's money. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. France, I think, is 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 ahead of everybody in the cancer game. Yeah. <laughs> Was it uh, Colonel Lance Rainey? Does that sound familiar? That's him. Yep. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Anyways. Continue. When you get his email address, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's it's gonna be it's gonna be lance dot c dot rainy at us dot army dot mil. Yeah. Fuck we can you, hope. Buddy. I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah. It'll yeah. either be that or a one after it or a two yeah. or a three. So keep sorry if your name is Lance C. Rainey and you weren't the commander of uh, Womack. Well, then sorry, but <laughs> if you are, then fuck you, buddy. <laughs> um, so with stage four, do they give you like a time period of, of how long you have? Does the doctor say, all right? Uh, no, not yet. Just because there, I mean, there are treatments out there that will keep it stable. Um, but, you know, I've, from what I've ever been told, you have to go about five years before they consider you in remission. Mm-hmm. And I've, I haven't even hit two years. <laughs> so, um, so I, I know right now, I think I had about two options and then this clinical, which at the time they were like, the clinical doesn't always work with people with your genetic mutation. So it's kind of like a toss up right now. I, I'll find out this weekend when I go back, but they sounded hopeful, but until I find out, you know, it's, it's, it's always a guess. So we didn't really get into it, but what caused the cancer in the first place? That, like shrapnel or so spall no, or No something? one directly will say, um, the pulmonologist I had out in town, um, his wild guess was where I was shot in Ramadi, Iraq, which mm. was in the old tank fields mm. where all the depleted uranium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we used to hide in the old tanks and we used to use them for cover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the, his guess was like probably right around there. And then I had another buddy, uh, a good trusted source, um, who actually was like, I know what was in that area and the dirt and everything. And he's like, I can guarantee you that's where you got it from. DU stuff. Well, you so. know, you can file a class action lawsuit for Gulf War syndrome, which is directly related to depleted uranium. 
Oh yeah, I don't. I don't. But you have to prove it, <laughs> and that's yeah, you yeah, have to prove it. That's not easy. I mean, and, you, and that's the hardest thing. Well, yeah. so I want to go back. For so what had to was prove the hearing there. like? When you got mad at the colonel, what happened? Because what is this hearing? Well, I did. So that was the congressional hearing I did in D.C. <laughs> but at the the meeting with the colonel, I just kind of kept quiet and was like, "All right." Oh, I'm, you didn't I'm flip gonna... any tables? No, nah, my my command was there, and I was trying to be semi professional and keep my bearings about me because I was still a little. Uh, Weren't they angry too? They were. I think everybody was more caught off guard than okay. than anything. But uh, yeah, it was just it was pretty upsetting at the time. So, uh, I mean, I got to think yeah. just from my own personal experience, I'd be way more pissed off if somebody fucked with one of my soldiers and if they fucked with me personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what are these people doing? Yeah. Honestly, well, I, I mean, luckily my chain of command's been great. They're yeah. they're supportive. They you know they give me all the, the leeway I can to take care of stuff. So I can't ask for anything better as far as soft goes. Soft's been amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say too much about the medical system, given the fact that when I started all this too. They were like, oh, hey, by the way, here's your medical board packet. Go ahead and see your oh, way yeah. out. How many, so, how many people do you know that, like, had wives that were pregnant and they went, they, pay, they spent their own money oh, without yeah. insurance yeah. to take them off post away from Womack yeah. to get yeah. that shit taken care of? Why is it so bad? Because, you, you, look, you hear, uh, and it's constant jokes about it and memes yeah. all the time about how bad the VA is. Uh, Rocco, I, I was watching his post the other day because he had to go in, and he posted three hours later. Three hours later, you know, <laughs> you're just constantly saying, why is the VA so terrible? Well, I think... Uh, well, it's not the VA. This yeah, is the actual active yeah, military. Active yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think system. personally, just they're, they're undermanned, understaffed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when you get to the ones, you know, the ones who are really in charge, you know, you got all the little minions. They're only doing what they can do, but the ones who are in charge, they can't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So would you care if you can't get in trouble? You get used yeah. to a lifestyle of like... All right, when I get to this guy, I'll get to this guy. Yeah. When I get to them, I'll get to him. And that job. And then, you know, if you can't get in trouble, well, what do you care? Yeah, what is it really? Being, being, being a colonel in charge of Womack is a stepping stone to another position. That's mm -hmm. all it is. That's not, that's not a goal for somebody. That's where they go to check that box and then move on to the next part of their career, which is an all-too-common refrain in fucking uh, both politics and the military. Like, a lot of yeah. people just don't care about the position they're in at the time. When the, when the colonel switched out, I actually had a guy reach out to me who said he worked at Womack Army Hospital. And he was like, hey, I don't know if you know this new incoming commander. And I was like, no, I don't. He's like, you need to watch out. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, whatever. I thought I was kind of being set up, to be honest. And he's like, this guy's supposedly up for his star. And he's like, he will not let you ruin him. That's and John then, Melton. Sure as shit. By the way. Not, not much longer I was on a medical board. And there's more to that story, too. My my group. We'll, feel, my group for, we'll do that one when your med My group done. physician got a phone call from Womack. Somebody from Womack, who was a colonel, wanted to discuss me being put out well there's only a couple of colonels over there there's only True. one full colonel <laughs> i just i was never told a name to be honest so. his name is john j melton m-e-l-t-o-n oh he's up for a star huh so fuck you i don't know all these people man how yeah. how yeah. how can you fucking live one day on this earth like like just the, the concept of survivor's guilt and it's something that the three of us have definitely dealt with in one form or another and this asshole over here too uh <laughs> it's 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 something it's like the probably the most common version of mental health issue and any kind yeah. of shooting like shooter based MOS. Right. And that's why I, I that, that's one of the contributors I think to all the fucking mental health issues because people like that just don't get it. Like, don't come fucking tell me how to do my job because you don't understand what sacrifice is. You just don't get it. Yeah. Like you don't understand what it is to watch your buddy fucking bleed out or whatever the fucking case is. Right. And I think we need, we, I don't like taking shooters off the line, but it's a good argument to fucking put people like that in positions of authority that have, uh, have reach into these medical like we need that shit we need medical care we need it we can't yeah. I can't have some pencil pushing piece of shit who's never fucking sacrificed shit in his life except for to keep his hair short for the last 25 years like I need somebody in there that understands and go shit. to school yeah. yeah like you didn't do shit dude fuck yeah. you well and it's funny too because you know one of the excuses I hear is I'm, me I'm messing with good order and discipline by this bill and I'm like well uh, if you ask me, I think better health care keeps more people deployed, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 better <laughs> fighting soldiers, you know, downrange rather than less, you know. So I was like, that, that definitely frees up a lot of stress for people who are yeah. constantly back to back to back, <laughs> you know. So I was like, I'm pretty sure when you're sending, you know, somebody like me who my command is supporting but ha still has to deal with, mm. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that the health, health system caused, uh, um, you know, a disconnect. It's yeah. broken. Yeah. And instead of going, oh, man, we fucked up, it's, yeah. oof. No, no, you just need to be yeah. quiet. No, what they want you, you to do, what they want you to do is quietly die. 
Yeah, like that's pretty much it. That's what I feel like. Anyways. That's what they want. I guarantee, yeah. I guarantee yeah. fucking to you that's what they want. Yeah. Whether they'll admit it or not, that's yeah. what they want. And then kick, kick me out, pass they know me on the, the taxpayer's the, dollar, yep. and then you know, let the me go out there and go away. The new cycle will fucking turn over in a couple of days, and that'll be yeah. the end of it. But yeah. that's not going to happen this time, my friend. Fuck these yeah. guys. So, yeah, so let me ask you this. What do these guys have to gain by this? Uh, do they get more money in a, in a higher position? No, is, my is, thought is just the next next rank. That's yeah. it. If you keep that off your OER, you money for that, that OER, yeah, yeah, you end up more okay. money, more rank, more power, right? Gotcha. So, I mean, more really time. Yeah, you can't have, you know. If you got that on your OER. Hospital yeah. looking like a fucking, like, looking like idiots. Well, now it's too late there, fucking buddy. Yeah. yeah. You guys look like idiots. Yep. Yeah, because it, it, from the outside, look, I'm, I'm the only civilian here. It seems so shocking that you can't wrap your mind around it, right? Because mm-hmm. you, you figure for what you are sacrificing what you're doing day to day you should have the best medical health care that you could possibly get and it's, it's just not true and yeah. then when something does happen like you for example and it's awful and you get a, a terminal diagnosis then it just seems like it's gotten worse for you oh yeah and then mm-hmm. you've got to go through all of this shit because i mean look I, I, before you came on the show we were going through how many news outlets i mean you're on nbc you were everywhere your mm-hmm. story is everywhere right now and you still can't get this fucking thing passed. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Now, it looks like it's on the table, and it hasn't been dismissed, this bill, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What is the next step for something like this? How, how does it get passed? And, uh, and, and what's the time frame? Well, I mean, from you know, what I know, the NDA, they they got to wrap it up as soon as possible. I mean, yep. it's a big budget. It's got to pass, you know. Um, Do I've, you know I've the heard... budget by any chance? No, I don't. Like uh, the number? Yeah, I mean it's. I've heard uh, it I think it's like seven hundred fifty billion, yeah. typically somewhere in that range for the NDA yeah, as a whole. Yeah, it depends on and it depends on what they include because technically national defense includes uh, part of our national debt. There's, it's complicated, mm-hmm. but some of the questions like we we threw this up in uh, in Drinker Bros groups and even on co- in the comment section on uh, YouTube and shit like that, and people are wondering aloud, I guess, or at least trying to have the conversation. Because it happens in politics a lot. Well, is it a clean bill trying to get passed or are there a bunch of riders that dirty it up? Right. Uh, this is not that kind of situation. This is the National Defense Authorization Act, and it's not being held up over this one thing. There's no way. Like, it is a massive fucking bill. Yeah. And every, there's so much pork in it. Like, there's so much government waste in the military in general. But this is, like, it, it's, it's egregious, to say the least, right? I mean, this one, and again, it comes back to one guy. It's Lindsey Graham. He can either put it up for a vote in his committee or he can get the fuck out of the way. Now, is there other people in the same situation as you who are fighting for the same bill? Well, I mean, there's others who have been wrong just like me, you know, that are, you know, supporting me as well as, you know, helping out as best they can. But, you know, when you're somebody like me who doesn't have connections to anybody, you just you call everybody you can. You knock on every door that you can. So it's been it's been hard. You know, I mean, we started at the very, very bottom. Yeah. Seth (laughs) Seth called me. Yeah, that's it. I (laughs) literally just got desperate one day. I was like. Shit, who I know, I reached out to one buddy. He was like, hey, try Seth. And Seth, you know, send me your number. He's like, <laughs> he's like, hey, this dude might take a while to get a hold of, but just keep trying. So, yeah, you will eventually I, get a hold of yeah, Jared. Yeah, I think dude. I got a hold of Seth like two more times. I was like, <laughs> hey, seriously, can you help me out here? <laughs> so, but, uh, but no, I mean, that's just been what it's been, you know, and uh, it's worked out. I mean, I, I obviously don't know any movie stars. I wish I did. You know, it'd be pretty cool, but I don't. Um, you know, the hardest thing is it's, it's something that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to accept it and understand it. Nobody knows about it. So it's raising awareness, um, you know, and you know, everybody thinks, you know, I hear this all the time. Oh, you're going to, you're going to destroy the system. Like no. you kidding me? Like, why would I dedicate 18 years of my life to a system I want to destroy? No, absolutely not. You're just holding people and, accountable. And, and to be honest, I don't yeah. even want to destroy the system. I want to destroy that doctor that screwed me. That's it. And so he doesn't go screwing you and you and you and you mm-hmm. like right now. Could you, could anybody, could you go find somebody that tells me where this person's at right now? Are they still practicing? Yeah. Ain't nobody been able to tell me yet so really? far. Do you know the person's name? I, I, I mean, I've heard it before, but I don't, I don't, I'll leave that to Tell Natalie. me offline <laughs> and I'll fucking find the person. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <coughs> where's that person at? Where's, where's the one who read my scans and then never told me the second time I was in the ER? Where's the doctor who said, hey, we had your scans reread, but then never <laughs> told me, hey, we saw a tumor? You know, where are they all at? Are they still practicing? Probably. Do you have access to all your medical records mm-hmm. of who saw you and, and what? Yeah. Yeah. So they have to put <laughs> no, the name on it. One thing, <laughs> like, I'll take those if names. We need yeah. to go out. We need to go out with a bang for 2019. This is this is Drinker Bros Wide. Like, oh, for sure. We need yeah. to rally around this. We need to fuck with these people a lot. We need to make sure that dude doesn't get fucking promoted. Uh, yeah. And, and on the flip side of this. <laughs> because
because it, 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 you know, like you said, it's, it's you right now. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much you against them. Has anybody else come out and said, hey, man, what you're doing is wrong. And it's, you know, you could really fuck over the military. You could fuck over anybody else. Not anybody outside of the politicians. No, it's a, it's, it's no. a classic slippery slope argument. Like if you open up the fairies doctrine that anybody can sue for anything, that it'll, it will never be like that. It's a case law. It's, it's generated case law. This will be case law saying, yeah, you can do it. But a judge still fucking decides yeah. if you get the fucking sue or well, not. And that's, that's the other one I've heard. Oh, you're, you're adding all these litigations. We already have a military judicial system anyways. What am I adding to any of that? Yeah. It's already You're there. holding people accountable that's for being it, shitty know? at their fucking job. Yeah, that's all. Like, And we're quick to do it against anybody yeah. else in any other thing. I guarantee you, we're when fu- you were in, if you had shot the wrong person, your ass hey, would be yeah, in Leavenworth. Yeah, yeah. You know? our, ass, our ass is sitting yeah. right in that courtroom. Yep. Yeah. Like, so, so it's like fuck off. But then we're, it's, we're but in then the it's this, and it's like, whoa, we don't even want to talk about it. You know, <laughs> well, so. medical people are off limits. We're, fuck in the, you. Yeah. we're in the middle of like cancel culture, right? Like we're just, like right in the middle of it right now. But we can't hold doctors accountable just yeah. because they're they were working for the military. I mean, what the fuck, yeah. man? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a very narrow exception. I'm not trying to mess with training. I'm not messing with combat. I mean, I think everybody understands you got to train like you're going to war, right? Yeah. I mean. We understand the inherent risks of what we're doing, so well, we're not I, talking about I that. Suffered, I suffered. I, I suffered the system. In in my case, it wasn't it wasn't an illness. It was just their slow. They took yeah. twenty eight months to process the fact that I was fine and continued my job, but that dove me over my my um, currency requirements for being a JTAC. Mm-hmm. So, which per the reg. It said I had to go back to JTAC. You see, if I wanted to be a JTAC again, I'm like, you just wasted yeah. my fucking time because you took 28 months for well, an appointment. No, they that didn't took just me waste one your day yep. for them to go. No, you're good. They didn't just waste yeah. your time. How much does that training cost? Exactly. Like, like they wasted fucking taxpayer money on bullshit, man. Like how you could have for the and it took, for the it amount took, of money it takes to train an I operator. I got to where I got was because. When they started fucking with me, I started calling my friends, and the governor of New Mexico got involved because that's mm. where I was being seen was up at uh, in Almongordo, mm. and and that's the only reason was because I as soon as I knew something was fucked, I called Gary O'Neill, and Gary O'Neill goes, "I'll fucking handle this. Watch this," like and yeah, I got a phone call the next day that hey, the O six in charge of the medical group is the only one allowed to talk to you in this clinic from here on out, but. When you're dealing with a fucking 06, yeah, he, he gets you in his office and goes, yeah, I'm going to get this done and we're going to do this. Mm. Well, fucking, it takes two goddamn years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you said it too. They always talk about uh, the cost, right? And it's like, what about, could you imagine the cost that I've incurred over two years of all this crap right now between the surgeries, the chemos, the radiation, all of that stuff? It's like it's insane, and what are they doing? They're dumping. Had someone just done their job in the, yep. in the beginning. And they're they're dumping it on who? Taxpayers. Yeah. Taxpayers are paying for all this right now to keep me alive. When a doctor, all he had to do was say, "Hey, I got something right here. This guy's got a tumor on his chest. We should let's get him it. some chemo surgery, and he'd probably be alive, right? Or like you know, not stage four for sure. Mm. But you know, now it's what? What am I costing the taxpayers? And that that upsets me. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want to be a burden on anybody. You know, that's the whole reason I joined the you know, defend this country and do everything else. So we weren't burdens to anybody, you know? Right. Uh, let me ask you this. If this bill does pass, does it get named after you? Yeah. So it's named after me right now. It is. It is yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was really, curious about that. Cause I, look, we, we've never yeah. had anybody in here who's <laughs> fought to this, this type of level where it's like, man, there's going to be a bill named. Yeah. After I think Jared's got some laws named after him, but it's like not good stuff. <laughs> yeah. no. it's, mostly, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the, actually the felony for inciting a riot. Uh, and the pedo bear is actually him. It's uh, shaped after him, and that's in a corner. Yes. Uh, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Pedo bear? He's no. like, he, the, the, remember that old animation where the bear, like, kind of um, like the animated bear walks into a room? Maybe. That means pedo bear is watching you? Yeah. You know, pedophile that? friendly. No. <laughs> yeah, no. the bear Come goes on. in the corner. Oh, you, you, you look a lot like that bear. No, but I this don't. will be named after you, the bill. The yeah. bill. Yeah, no yeah. Shit. I, I didn't I didn't really want to, but uh, Natalie, my attorney, she was pretty adamant about it. So, I, I mean, it's cool. I just. You know, I'm not that kind of guy, to be honest. But uh, do, do you mind me asking? Is she doing this pro bono, or she is? That's she's amazing. been helping me out tremendously. I mean, hotels and everything else, and she's—I couldn't one in a mil- million. You know what I mean? Couldn't find a better person on. You got a good attorney. So, yeah, yeah, she's great. I like her. Yeah, and you got a good friend, Seth. Yes, yeah. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> How did you find her? Because look, taking a case pro bono is fucking good luck in today's uh, society. Y- you know, actually. I started on post. I went through all the Jags and, and all the systems and everything. And I was told, you know, 
yeah, you can't sue because you're after duty or you can't do anything. Then I looked into just filing complaints. And then I was constantly told, well, even if something happens, nobody will ever tell you anyways. And I was like, well, how do I know if something happens? And they're like, well, you won't. And I was like, well, that's not, that's not really going to work for me. So my wife and I started calling. Well, actually, she would call probably a dozen or more attorneys across the state. I think we called a few um, through like Texas and stuff. And these, these assholes, man, they let my wife tell this story over and over and over. And then every time at the end, they're like, man, that, that sucks. Sorry, there, there's nothing you can do. Mm. And then finally, my mom... Um, calls me and she's like hey i got an appointment a phone call for uh, um, this attorney down in florida um she said she wants to hear your case and i was like all right great another one right i'm gonna waste my time i remember sitting on the phone telling the story rolling my eyes like oh, such a waste of time this is ridiculous and i remember by the time i was done it was just quiet and i think it was natalie and there's probably about four others on the phone and it was, it was quiet for about 10 seconds and all of a sudden you hear natalie out of the back and she's like so what the hell are we going to do about Fuck this? Them. <laughs> Fuck them. And then uh, <laughs> they asked me another question or two and they're like, all right, we'll be in touch. And then I got them all the medical records and everything. And it was slow from there. Definitely. And then um, I think she figured out that, you know, you can't sue obviously. And it got, you know, turned down and then she kept, I didn't hear nothing for a while. And then all of a sudden she got a hold of me and was like, we're going to do an interview and we're going to go through DC. And this is the only way it's going to happen. Yeah. But why not, that, why not track that doctor down and just open up a fucking suit on him? <laughs> you could do that. No, can't. you can't. No, you can't. Your very doctor protects the doctor yeah. as well. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah, can't do anything. The only one that could have done something is my family if it happened to them. Oh, they can't mm -hmm. even sue on my behalf. Yeah, oh, wow. because I'm the soldier that it happened to. This is so, fucked. I, this is I, black and white fucked. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fucked. Um, well, look, we have you also down here for another reason, which we'll get to. We have sponsors uh, that we have to get to mm -hmm. uh, for the show. What but, is this uh, going to air? Uh, uh, probably, I think Monday. Um, but uh, first, first and foremost is ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. Uh, they're a chief sponsor for the year. We've been super <laughs> grateful to have them on board. Uh, their 36 month pay as you go program, amazing. No interest across the board. If you're military or a first responder, you get 15% off everything in the store forever sheets, pillows, covers. You name it, adjustable bases, you got it. Uh, and their Black Friday deal is about to hit, and it is magic. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get on it. Uh, next up, what do we got, D'Anthony? Let's see, Raycon. Yeah. You like those uh, earbuds? Earbuds. Uh, buy Raycon.com. These guys right here, brand new. Um, we love them. They're uh, now six hours worth of wireless. Boom, you pop them in a, in a box, you recharge them. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash wave. drinking bros. <laughs> Everybody's wearing these fucking things yeah. everywhere yeah. Um, because they're, they're the only ones that are affordable. And if you want to be ready to fucking dance while you're wearing your Raycons, drink some Black Rifle coffee. You got damn right. Some caffeinated <laughs> as fuck or some Power Llama. Yeah. Like, fucking get that in your system. Go on the club. You don't even have to, but, you know, once you sign up, it's just delivered to your door anytime that you want. Same date of every single you get month. To pick. Their apparel you get to pick. is also some of the you'll best be, in the biz. You'll be hyped up and ready to dance. Drinking Bros 20 is the promo code of Black Rifle Coffee. Dot com and at buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, that's it. They take 15% off of that URL, knocks them headphones down to about 55 bucks. Uh, Those are great. What I was saying before, um, we do this thing uh, at the end of the year called the Brosman of the Year. Um, and we pick one person uh, a year to receive the uh, wow, award. This really lined up. And we would mm. like to give it to you for uh, 2019. We actually have a, a huge trophy, and we engrave everybody's name on it's it. It's at your house, and, right? Yes. Um, yeah. It's at <laughs> uh, the other studio in San Antonio. Um, we would like to make you the Brosman of the Year. It is rare that someone actually fights back against the system, especially against the U.S. government and how daunting and big this task is. And uh, what you're going through right now is fucking monumental. I mean, it, it is it is a bear, man. I, I can't imagine what you and your family is going through, what your wife is going through. Uh, like you were saying about making all those phone calls over and over again. Um, I mean, I'm almost crying. My wife just walks in. I, I, I can't imagine putting my family through that and having them go through something like this on a day-to-day -day basis, constantly being told no for a job that you, know, you volunteered to do. And, uh, I mean, it's a really simple expectation that if I'm going to go fuck people up and endure this shit maybe just like help me out a little bit when i get back it's it seems like a simple thing right like 
in, in almost every culture that's ever existed in humanity. Uh, and it's not why we do it, by the way, but returning soldiers, especially our dead and injured, are revered, right? Mm-hmm. Because of the sacrifice they made. And it's just not happening anymore. Honestly, it's not. Like if a, a fucking comedian who, who, who ventured into drama and, and political activism has to go in front of Congress to get people who responded to the 9-11 attacks taken it's, care it's of. It's crazy. What the fuck is happening Crazy here? to me. Yeah, I, and, and for it to get press, and like for those of you out at home who are listening and saying, hey, man, the legal process, how hard could it be? It is a fucking nightmare day in and day out that is never ending. I'm sure you probably talk to your lawyer at this point more than you talk to your parents or your, or your wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty close. You know, it, it, then when we started this, they say any a, t- a typical bill – would take about three years. Mm-hmm. That's a standard just a bill, not something like this. That's seventy year olds or seventy years old that you're challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, between Natalie, I mean, we're down to what just over a year, about a year. That's pretty. I talk amazing. to his lawyer more than I talk to yeah, anybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jared's, but uh, Jared, yeah, it's, Jared's it's, looking yeah. for uh, <laughs> uh, legal you know, advice. Yeah, yeah. Legal <laughs> <call now>. yeah. <laughs> you might need it at the end. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we could all use some legal advice from time to time. I use I use uh, the girl I'm breaking up with as my divorce attorney. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a first. Can you represent me? Yeah, no, you I'm divorcing me? you. Yeah, yeah but can no, you represent can me? You also represent. We should do that in cat court. Yes, that is in cat court. Yeah. <laughs> How can people help? How can people get involved and in, uh, and help your situation? Um, I mean. I mean, there's a few, I mean, if you know, like, you know, anybody in, in um, politics, um, you know, movie stars, anybody that has influence anywhere, mm-hmm. um, anybody that knows, you know, anybody in the media, that's generally like the gist of it. Um, other than that, it's reaching out to the politicians of the judicial uh, judiciary committee on the, in the Senate. So it's the Senate that we need, um, as well as armed services committee um, in, the, in the Senate. Also on top of that, you know, I don't really like to tell people like, do this, do that. It's man, whatever you think can help fire away. You yeah. really can't go wrong at this point because right now it is nothing. Until it passes, it's nothing. So you can't do wrong necessarily. If um, anybody out there that has a decent <coughs> influence following or anything that listens yeah. that wants to jump in on this and wants to talk to him, hit me up on Instagram and I'll forward you the info. You know, John yeah. Burke did a big piece mm-hmm. uh, for you recently and a couple other guys. Have You'd be great on board. Jocko to go on Jocko's show. That's, a, that's another yeah. big show. Uh, Marcus Luttrell, uh, Team Never Quit. Yeah, Rogan would do this. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan. Rogan should do this. Yes. Um, if you're listening, that that would be fantastic. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, look, Dakota Meyer. Dakota Meyer is another yep. one who's who's got a great show. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if if anybody's listening out there, uh, help this man out and, and and get him the press that he needs. Obviously, we'll push this as much as we can um, going forward. But uh, man, um, thank you for coming down. I appreciate and, and it. Thank doing you. The show. Um, this is the point in the show where we uh, we do the drinking bro of the week, which is somebody who's inspired you or uh, helped you along the way. Um, it could be any walk of life, by the way, for this one. Uh, who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Um, it's kind of one and the same. I mean, really, it's just my family. You know, I mean, I it, it this not to get too personal with it, but literally between all the stuff between DC, the treatments. Um, I mean, my family's pretty much falling apart at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, because of this? Yeah. It's it's just, it's become a lot. Uh, I don't want to get too personal with it, but it's it's literally my life is being destroyed daily through it. But uh, I got I to gotta see it through. I, can't, I don't have a choice, but I mean, I'm between fighting cancer, DC, being medically discharged. You know, I got two daughters at home that are growing up. They're almost 11 and 13. My wife is obviously definitely struggling in our marriage. Um, so it's, I don't have much going for me right now. My cancer, my cancer treatment, I don't even know if it's working yet. But uh, I don't know what else to do. But uh, So really, it's just my wife and my kids. Okay. Um, sorry. No, no. Uh, do you think you'll be alive by the time this bill passes? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I believe I'll be around for quite a while. Uh, at least that's my hope. Um, I've never quit anything in my life other than <laughs> dive school when I 
Couldn't pass because well, I had to cancer. Be fair, dive, <laughs> dive school is the hardest school in the military. It is yeah. what I'm saying. You get you get like drowned on purpose, which seems stupid. So. <laughs> who, who signs up for that shit? Like, hey, we're gonna uh, drown you and then bring you back. Like, whoa, let me stop you right there. <laughs> Fuck, do you say to me? Right. <laughs> we'll bring it back to a, a lighter note. What do you enjoy as a person outside of the military in real life? Um. Uh, uh, really, I just, you know, watching my kids do sports. My daughter is an aspiring gymnast. My oldest is a softball player. So, you know, going to watch them do their stuff, is, it's it's amazing, you know. And then, uh, you know, we have a boat, so trying to get them out on the lake as much as I can. And then just spending time with the wife as much as I can. Are you, you a know? long-range so, guy? Am I a long-range Shoot. guy? Yeah. I mean, that's what I've been doing most of my career. Did yeah. you, have you drowned proof your kids yet? <laughs> <laughs> Getting there. They're, they're testing me, that's for sure. I mean, anybody, <laughs> but, that, anybody that jumps into that stuff, it's like you guys love it. Yeah. Like the science yeah. behind, behind. Yeah. Behind it's definitely uh, it's, it's a thinking game. You know, you got to. Like I said, when, I, when we started this in D.C., I didn't have a clue. I had not a clue. I Like, sure, okay, we'll figure it out. And it's like, I mean, you're all in or nothing. There's no other way. I mean, there's so many back doors to it all, and there's so many paths that you got to take and who you know and what you know. And, uh, you know, if you, if you don't figure out the system that's where natalie's just she kills it you know what i mean and without her work ethic of you know five thousand hours in one day it, it wouldn't be anywhere it is today so and how did you guys meet how were you introduced uh just through that conversation my, my mom found her um she found a i think a case that she had won for uh, somebody in the military and she just took a shot and it worked out that's amazing so. Uh, what, what's her full name, by the way? Natalie so Quam. Yeah, yep. so we can get, a, they get that out to the Natalie Quam, and uh, it's for, she works down in the Whistleblower Law Firm in Tampa, Florida. I think it's K-H-A-W-A-M, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's awesome. She's uh, dope. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to have her on the show, too. She was we supposed will. to be here, yeah. but she yeah. uh, had to go work 5,000 hours in a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she had an emergency in Tampa yeah. for one of her clients. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Um, listen, man, uh, God, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. This Thank is, you. This is one of the craziest stories ever where it's like, man, you read something like this and, and you don't think that it's actually happening to somebody. Yeah. Um, and it, for us, it's surreal. I mean, we just talked about it two weeks ago on the show and then boom, you're sitting here. So uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day. To I come mean, up and this here. is this is something that this group of one hundred and five thousand people, we can make a massive impact. Yeah. In the six point so four million let's listeners, let's fucking go, guys. Yes. Let's go. What, what is the best we course of action? We will provide direction. You so know, just, using the group. Is it Lindsey Graham himself? Who is it? Who's the best? <laughs> Lindsey best Graham, of I think, would be the the, the key to it all. Mm-hmm. But it really, you know, as much as I want Lindsey Graham to say yes, I'll support it. I, I want the whole Judiciary Committee to support it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's their that's their entire job, right? You say you support the military. We well, support you. That's the thing so that I said. When's when it going to happen? When we first discussed this, he was he was like, uh, or at least in, in that video, we brought it up. Like he said, I don't, yeah, I'll talk to him, but I'm not going to change my mind. Your mm-hmm. job as a Judiciary Committee member mm-hmm. is to listen to the facts and then respond and, to them yes. in a way that makes sense, right? That's your job as a fucking jurist. You know, that's, I got that, uh, that's that's literally your only goddamn job yeah. as a jurist. I, I got told um, Senator Graham was short on time. It was funny. My response was, "You think you're short on time?" <laughs> uh, come, come and talk to me any day of the week i'll tell you what short on time means two zero two 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 four five nine seven two this guy's phone he shouldn't be able to take any calls except for ours <laughs> how do you say you're short on time to somebody in your situation I don't know. it's pretty pretty uh you're a fucking so, idiot sometimes yeah. you just gotta smile you know Lindsey graham's a piece of shit that's how fuck man i it's it's just crazy I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. There is no other way to describe it. Yeah, but I, you know what? I, honestly, man, I, I, I believe it's going to pass. I believe people are going to stand up and do the right thing. I, I just I don't have any other way to think about it other than that. But, you know, it's it's getting it out there, and this is obviously a big stepping stone, so I, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, you know, when like I said, when you're just two people on the bottom, it's hard to get your word mm-hmm. up, you know? But Where can everybody find you on social media and stuff and help out? Because that, that way, in case any one of the people we mentioned – uh, Jocko Rogan. Uh, um, uh, um, you know, unfortunately, like I said, with with my family really struggling right now, I've been trying to drop off it. To be honest, yeah, just have them go to me. Um, really, just reach out to Natalie, um, okay. the whistleblower law firm. Was, she knows how to get a hold of me. We usually talk to you three a.m. So you know, okay. there's always something going on. But um, for the sake of my my marriage, and my kids, right now, I just that would be the simplest for me. No, we got it. Yeah. All right. Awesome, man. Well, look, uh, thank you for being on the show. Awesome. Thank, thank you for being our, our 2019 Brosman winner of the year. 
Um, we, we will have that engraved. Uh, recipient. In, yeah, recipient. Let's use that word. Recipient, yes. correct, yeah. Win. Yeah. Well. You uh, receive. Yeah. He's a, he was, he's a receiver. Yeah. Was, a catcher. Yeah. Some might say catcher. He's I don't a catcher. Know. Yeah. yeah. He's a catcher. More ways than one. <laughs> no, but we, we will get the, tro- the, the trophy engraved and everything, and it's, uh, it lives on our set forever. And oh, That's uh, awesome. Thank you. Nobody exemplifies that more than you this year. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, for Richard, uh, Jared, D'Anthony, D'Anthony, uh, I'm Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good nights, everyone. <laughs>